Hello, my name is Carol May Wittick, spiritual life coach. Thank you for tuning in to Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations. This week, I'm talking about the power of self-talk from Hafez. The words you speak become the house you live in. Let me tell you about my new course, Your Awakened Voice. This is a self-led course for you to release the power of your voice. Now, perhaps you want to launch a podcast, speak in public, or just confidently express yourself in your daily life and you still feel stuck in your stories and the fear around your voice. This course is here to support you to clear any energetic blockages, release any disempowering fears, as well as guide you through the technical aspects. I'm also looking at healing any of those things that have been holding you back and actually unleashing your voice out into the world. Now more than ever, the world needs people who are in their true voice. More details about that are in the show notes. And also, every Monday following the Friday release of her inspirations, I send out an accompanying email for each episode. So if you haven't already, do consider joining the mailing list and you'll receive additional meditation, journaling, inspirational notes, also links to any additional resources, and relevant exclusives so use the link in the show notes below to join up and also you'll receive the free embody higher energetic resonance course during the six-day course you will feel into your vision physically emotionally and spiritually and start to take action on your dreams from brene brown talk to yourself like you would someone you love so self-talk is this internal narrative uh, it's, it's your internal narrative. It's the voice that's going on in your head. It's the things that you're constantly saying to yourself about yourself and about the world that you live in. That internal narrative is going to shape the way that you see the world and see yourself. And it is the difference between whether you succeed at what you want or whether you don't achieve it in the way that you want to. I think we seriously underestimate the power of words uh, because if we think words consist of vibration and sound, these sounds, these vibrations are what create the very reality that surrounds us. So by that token, we should then only pick the very best words in order to create our very best reality, right? So think about it. What are you saying about yourself on a daily basis? What are you telling yourself about your capabilities? What are you telling yourself about the situation you're in and how you can create and shift that situation if that's what you want to do? What do you believe is possible for you based on all the things that you may or may not identify yourself as? What are your intentions? What are your desires? What are you saying about those things? Are you looking at your, your dreams and saying, I can and I will do it and I can achieve those and it is possible for me and I deserve those things? Or are you in a state of thinking, well, I'm not sure and, you know, bringing everything down on yourself and seeing it not as a possibility for you? The way that you are viewing anything in your world is just going to shape your experience on a moment to moment basis. Or are you putting too much pressure on yourself for something? Are you saying, I, I must do this and I should do that? And, and is that true for you? Are you getting to the core of who you are? Are you, uh, to reference the Brené Brown quote, talking to yourself like you love yourself? Or do you feel that you have to be this disciplinarian with yourself and a hard taskmaster to get yourself to do things? Are you making half promises and excuses? Are you in this stage where you're just like, well, you know, I'll try and do that or, or, or I hope that this happens for me or, or I wish for these things? Just the mere mention of those statements, you can see that there's no real power, there's no di direction, there's no intention. It's kind of feeling that, well, if you say something, just by saying something to yourself, that's enough. But how do you really feel about the things that you continually tell yourself that you're going to do and then don't do them? My bet is that it doesn't feel good. You don't, it doesn't build your own confidence. And also when, when you're going through hard times, how do you talk about the situation that you're going through? As somebody who has had uh, my fair share of hard times, as we all have, what I realised is getting out of the space of why me? And it's not always easy because when things are tough, all you can think of is like, oh my, why me? Why, why is this happening again? 
why do I have to go through that? But what if you could reframe your why me to, yeah, why why me? What is it showing me? What is it telling me about uh, where I need to grow, where I need to shift, what I need to see? What can I see on the other side? So reframing the way that you're experiencing, the way that you tell yourself you're going through something is almost like, a, OK, this is something that's popped up again. Why is it recurring? What can I see about it? How can I deal with that? And coach yourself from the inside to ask yourself, what is this situation showing me? And then you'll find that you'll be able to move through that situation with confidence, with power, with direction, knowing that one, nothing ever stays the same all the time. There's always shift. There's always change. So, you know, it's a moment, you know, it's a season. But what do you want it to make of you? And, and again, when we get faced with things that we're saying, I can't do this, I can't do that, I, uh, you know, and, and all the lifts, all the list of things that we can tell ourselves that we can't do. And while many of those can'ts uh, are true until we decide that we're going to create a can situation around it, bringing more power to uh, a, a can't situation is saying, well, actually, I don't choose to do that at this particular point in time. Again, just a, a simple word, a simple way that you're telling yourself about something is now not that I can't do it. It's like I don't need to do that or I don't want to do that or I don't choose to do that now. Self-talk also is telling the truth. Are we telling ourselves the truth about situations or are we making excuses to ourselves and ultimately uh, the only person that we ever let down when we break our own promises to ourselves will be at the core ourselves and the pain and, and the dissatisfaction and the frustration of being the instigator of your own pain becomes unbearable or I hope it gets to a point for you that it does become unbearable so that you choose what you're telling yourself you're deciding that I'm not just going to keep lying to myself I'm not just going to keep putting myself off you know making a promise that you're going to achieve something making a promise that you're going to stick to a plan and then giving yourself reasons why you don't want to do that and just breaking your own promise to yourself because ultimately if you're not telling anybody else it's just you on you and the self-talk in that is asking yourself, why, why do I keep letting myself down? Why do I keep telling myself that it's OK to not really follow through and let myself off the hook all the time? Why do I keep making excuses? When am I going to decide that I'm going to go all in on my word to myself? Are you telling yourself that you deserve the life that you see for yourself, that you deserve to create improvements within your life? And if you're feeling that you don't deserve that, then the question is why? And again, <laughs> this all comes from within. So now when we come to starting to speak in the positive, and I'm sure everyone's familiar with the idea of affirmations. And my own personal experience of affirmations has been not overly successful, to be honest, I, because it was I, I was still not really embodying the idea of what it was I was trying to affirm to myself. It was very difficult for me to say that I'm rich, I'm a millionaire, when my financial situation did not reflect that. And I couldn't get into the space of what I was trying to affirm to myself. There was a kind of disconnect. And for me, what worked for me was to bring it down into the moment instead of instead of talking about myself I am a millionaire knowing that that wasn't true for me bringing the I am into the present and I am kind of roots you down to that very instant I am affirms who you are in that present moment it brings focus to where it is you are whether you're saying something positive or negative I am our words of creation as well what started to work for me when it came to speaking positively especially around the idea of abundance was I have everything that I need at this moment in time I am abundant I am cared for in this moment bringing that statement into now as opposed to a bigger space and then understanding that at that very moment in time I had enough money I had enough food I had everything that I needed in that second and then building it out from there and if your self-talk is highly negative I'm going to share with you one of my pet peeves and I think this might be a very British thing 
is this idea of self-deprecation and in particular self-deprecating humour where people are just kind of talking down on their abilities or their achievements or or kind of picking themselves apart for the entertainment of others. I can't think of anything that is less funny. And many people have made um, huge successful careers by standing up on stage and pulling themselves apart. That negative self-talk, that they've just kind of turned their own negative self-talk into their work. And while some might say that that is, um, you know, turning a negative into a positive. So you constantly have to find things to say about yourself that you don't like about yourself to to create your life. So, you know, if someone can kind of like unpick the, the brain noodle that I have around that, I super appreciate it. But for me, I just don't think it is anything that there's anything good about it. I won't I won't join in with somebody when they go into self-deprecating mode. And I can understand it. It might be uh, an attempt to kind of appear more modest so that other people can say, oh, no, 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 you're all right. And, and big you up from the outside. At this point, we all know that external validation is fleeting. If you're constantly in negative self-talk, if you have low self-esteem and someone tells you that you're great when you're going around telling everyone how terrible you are, you're not going to believe it. You know, for the moment, it might make you feel good for that second, um, but ultimately you won't believe it. So it has to come from inside. It's just this weird form of making fun of yourself to to kind of make yourself more lovable. I don't see the lovability about it. If you feel that you're in a space where you're not able to speak about how great you are and really talk about your pluses and talk about your brilliance and and be able to champion yourself, if you're not able to do that without people around you coming down on you and that's the reason you fall into this self-deprecation, then The people that you're talking to are not your people. You don't want to be around where people are cheering you on while you're picking yourself apart. This inner critic that we have is like, how do we deal with this constant inner critic that's telling you that you're not good enough, that you're always messing up, that this is not for you and you're not the right person or you're, you know, all of the things that this inner critic uh, can tell us. And as a creative person, I am constantly critiquing my own work. Now I've got to the space of knowing that I'm not letting myself off the hook in terms of just trying to phone something in or give 20%, you know, give the the bare minimum that's acceptable. Because after years of practicing my craft in many different uh, disciplines, I know that I can give a high level without too much effort. So I always want to give more as well. So my inner critic is probably just telling me to do better. But if we have this inner critic that's really just always pulling us down, pulling us down, create some distance from that voice. Notice a statement that it's telling you about yourself. If you're saying like, you're just not good enough or you can't do this. It's like, well, maybe I can't do this, but these are areas that I'm able to uh, add to this situation at this point. And yes, I can see there are points where I need to bring myself forward. So never just leave it as a statement without adding something to it that shows that you're on your way or shows that you're able to change it or shows that it's just simply not true because ultimately it isn't and that inner critic may be your voice or it may be the voice of someone who may be uh, criticizing you either directly or in a kind of very passive way Are you then, have you taken on the criticisms of someone in your life and then you're constantly repeating those words back to yourself? It's time to free yourself from that because it's time for us all to up-level ourselves. And one of the ways that you can do this, if you haven't already, is when you sign up for the email newsletter, you'll receive the Embody Her, Embody Higher Energetic Resonance six-day course which is going to guide you into visualizations of seeing you in the state that you want to achieve and starting to feel exactly what it is to be there. And by doing that, then you can actually start to see and feel the energy and the achievements of your future self. At that point, you really understand why you need to do the work that you're shown to do. It's showing you a greater aspect of yourself that if you get more into that space, 
there's going to be less and less negative self-talk. If you get into the uh, energy of your future self that has achieved what it is that you want to achieve, you can actually call on that future self to give you guidance as to how to get out of the funk. Or when the funk comes up, you just step through it because you know you've got a mission and a purpose on your life. So just again, reminding you why it's a good idea to sign up for the email newsletter. And when it comes to the impact on ourselves spiritually of this negative self-talk, it's a lie. We are all spiritual beings. We're a, ch- we're a child of God. We're a child of the universe. We're a child of creation. It's part of us. We're here to expand into the fullness of ourself. So anybody, including yourself, who does not acknowledge that that is a fact is just not serving your your expansion. When you go into those states, ask yourself, does this feel good? Does this feel true? Do I feel empowered here? More times than not, you, you, you're just not going to. And that's simply because you're trying to convince yourself of a lie. And that's why it feels so bad. When you get into that space of, yes, I'm connected. Yes, I'm guided. Yes, I'm worthy of all the things that I'm being shown then you move in the world in a different way. Again, coming back to even when you're faced with challenges as opposed to the why me. It's like, what is this showing me? What areas do I need to grow and overcome? So cultivate a loving inner dialogue. Every time something comes up that you're saying to yourself that is not helping you, question your judgment. Where is this coming from? Why am I saying these things time and time again to myself? Understand the importance of self-love in shaping your internal conversations. Talk to yourself like somebody who loves you. The more that you're able to cultivate that self-love, then the more as well you would draw people towards you who love you for you, as opposed to who you're trying to get something from to fill in the spaces that you're not feeding into yourself. There is nothing that can be achieved being in a disempowered state. Take note of what you're saying to yourself and ask yourself the things that you're saying to yourself. Would you dare voice them out loud to somebody else? And if the answer is no, then you've no business speaking to yourself in such a way. Find how you can shift towards more positive and empowering self-talk. Look at areas in your life where you've succeeded because you have. Even if you feel that you've not achieved all the things that you have on, on the wish list, on the vision board in your mind to achieve. Having that vision for yourself is a step in the right direction. Starting to take it seriously is a step in the di- in, in the right direction. There are so many people out there who don't even have that vision. So congratulate yourself for looking at what it is that you achieve. And that feeling of, of not being enough is just the, the space between having it and not being in it fully. Again, try that embody her, embody higher energetic resonance. The visualizations within that will bring you into a state of feeling what it is to have that and speaking to yourself from that point. Remember, you deserve kindness and compassion. To close from Andrew Carnegie, you are what you think. So think big, believe big, act big, work big, give big, forgive big, love big and live big. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you're receiving value from this series, please let me know. Share the breakthroughs, share the struggles, ask questions. And again, I encourage you to join the mailing list so you can receive additional learning points for your meditation, journaling, contemplation, just for you as you're doing your your own self-work. And you receive as a gift from me the free Embody Higher Energetic Resonance six-day course which is bringing you three steps closer to being the woman of your dreams. And also, if you want to go deeper with me as well, this message is for you. If you know there's a purpose to your life and you're ready to turn it into your reality, my purpose here is to help you make that happen. So if you're ready to take the next step on your transformation, if you want my support, accountability, radical honesty, contact me to find out more about my one-to-one spiritual life coaching program links to that are in the show notes find out more about me on my website so that's carolmaywittick.com c-a-r-o-l-m-a-e-w-h-i-t-t-i-c-k.com 
on social media, Carol May Wittick on Facebook and on LinkedIn and Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K on Instagram. Have an amazing week. Until the next episode, take care. Bye-bye.